few days ago, the ground beneath Alaska trembled with terrifying force. A powerful earthquake struck without warning, shaking cities, triggering tsunami alerts, and jolting an entire region into a state of fear and uncertainty. For many, it felt like the earth had simply snapped. But what if it was only a foreshock? What if Alaska is on the verge of something far more devastating? Alaska is one of the most seismically active places on Earth, sitting atop a violent collision zone between two massive tectonic plates. While locals are no strangers to quakes, this latest tremor reignited a terrifying question. Could a catastrophic megaquake, even larger than the infamous 1964 Good Friday earthquake, be looming just beneath the surface? Scientists are now racing to understand what this event means. Studying ruptures, monitoring aftershocks, and analyzing pressure along the fault lines. Today, let's delve into the recent earthquake in Alaska, the forces that caused it, and the chilling possibility that it may be a harbinger of an even greater catastrophe yet to come. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. In the early hours of July 17, 2025, the Alaska Peninsula experienced a powerful seismic event when a magnitude 7.3 earthquake struck approximately 54 miles south of Sandpoint. The U.S. Geological Survey reported the tremor occurred at around 12.37 p.m. local time and at a depth of roughly 20 kilometers beneath the ocean floor. Given its offshore location along the Aleutian subduction zone, the quake triggered an immediate tsunami warning spanning about a 700-mile stretch of coastline, from Kennedy Entrance to Unamak Pass. Coastal residents were told to evacuate to higher ground, roads filled with vehicles fleeing the coast as sirens blared advisories. Despite the alarm, the first wave previews were modest. Tide gauges recorded only 2 to 6 inches of sea level rise. By about an hour after the quake, officials downgraded the warning to an advisory and within two hours, the watch was lifted entirely. Although major population centers were spared the worst of the damage, the earthquake was a stark reminder that Alaska is one of the most seismically active regions on Earth. The event renewed fears that an even more devastating megaquake could be on the horizon, one capable of causing unprecedented destruction not just to Alaska, but to regions across the Pacific Rim. Alaska's violent geology is rooted in its tectonic setting. The southern coast of Alaska lies along the boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate. Here, the Pacific Plate is slowly being forced beneath the North American Plate in a process called subduction. The interface where these plates collide and interact is known as the Aleutian Subduction Zone, and it forms one of the most dangerous and active seismic regions on the planet. The Aleutian Trench stretches 2,500 kilometers from the Gulf of Alaska to the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. This subduction zone is a classic megathrust fault, one capable of generating some of the most powerful earthquakes known to science. As the oceanic plate grinds beneath the continental plate, immense stress builds up along the locked fault zone. Eventually, the fault ruptures, releasing stored energy in a violent burst that shakes the land displaces the seafloor, and can trigger devastating tsunamis. The Aleutian subduction zone is not uniform. It is divided into segments based on the geometry and behavior of the subducting slab. Some segments are locked and accumulating strain, while others may experience more frequent smaller slip events. This segmentation plays a crucial role in determining the size and frequency of earthquakes. Scientists monitor these zones closely, because areas that have remained locked for long periods, referred to as seismic gaps, are often the most likely to rupture in a future megaquake. The Aleutian subduction zone has a long history of major seismic events. The most infamous is the 1964 Good Friday earthquake, a magnitude 9.2 monster that remains the second most powerful quake ever recorded. The quake lasted nearly four and a half minutes, sending shockwaves across the entire state and causing devastation on a historic scale. The epicenter was located about 75 miles east of Anchorage, and the rupture stretched over 800 miles of the fault zone along the Aleutian subduction zone. 
Entire neighborhoods crumbled as the ground shifted by as much as 60 feet in some areas. Anchorage, Alaska's largest city, suffered catastrophic structural damage, with buildings, roads, and bridges torn apart. But it was the ensuing tsunami that claimed the most lives. Waves up to 220 feet high crashed into coastal towns, destroying everything in their path. The quake killed 131 people and caused over $300 million in damage, which is equivalent to several billion today. Then, there is also the magnitude 8.6 earthquake, which struck off the coast of Unimak Island in 1946. The quake was followed by a colossal tsunami wave that struck the coast, obliterating structures and sweeping people into the sea. But the destruction didn't end there. The tsunami raced across the Pacific at 500 miles per hour, reaching Hawaii five hours later. Hawaii was hit by waves over 35 feet high, killing 159 people and devastating the harbor. This tragedy marked a turning point in tsunami science, prompting the creation of the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center. The same seismic forces that produced these earthquakes remain active today, and other sections of the fault have not ruptured in over a century. This has led experts to suspect that a massive amount of strain is quietly accumulating, setting the stage for a potentially even larger event. To understand the potential for a future megaquake in Alaska, scientists examine not only modern seismic data, but also geological records, sediment cores, uplifted coastlines, and a tsunami deposits reveal a history of massive quakes every 300 to 600 years in some parts of the Aleutian subduction zone. In others, the recurrence interval appears shorter, sometimes only a few decades between major events. Certain segments of the trench have not ruptured in over a century. These seismic gaps are considered particularly dangerous. One area of concern is the Schumagin Gap. This stretch of fault has remained mysteriously quiet, despite accumulating tectonic stress, making it a likely candidate for future rupture. If the entire central segment of the Aleutian subduction zone were to rupture in one event, it could release a magnitude 9.0 plus earthquake, on par with the 2011 Tohoku quake in Japan. Such a megaquake would generate a trans-Pacific tsunami, threatening Hawaii, the U.S. West Coast, and even distant shores in Asia and Oceania. Alaska's seismic activity is not isolated. It is part of the larger Pacific Ring of Fire, a 40,000-kilometer horseshoe-shaped belt of active faults and volcanoes. Recent megaquakes in Chile, Japan, and Indonesia have demonstrated the interconnected nature of plate boundary dynamics. Some researchers believe that stress transfer along tectonic plates may play a role in triggering major events across vast distances. Could the July 17th quake be part of a larger global pattern? While such connections are debated, the increasing frequency of major events within the Ring of Fire raises valid concerns. If the Alaskan segment of the ring were to rupture in full, the consequences would reverberate worldwide, not just geologically, but economically. The region is a hub for oil production, commercial fishing, shipping routes, and national defense. A megaquake could disrupt supply chains, trigger market shocks, and expose vulnerabilities in global systems. The July 17th quake was a wake-up call, not just for Alaska, but for the entire Pacific region. While Alaska has invested in early warning systems and public education, vast stretches of remote terrain, limited infrastructure, and harsh weather conditions make rapid disaster response a monumental challenge. Alaska is home to over 700,000 people, with many residing in isolated communities, accessible only by boat or plane. In the event of a major quake, emergency aid could be delayed by days. The path forward lies in science, surveillance, and preparation. Earthquake forecasting remains an imperfect science, but new technologies are improving our understanding of fault mechanics and seismic hazards. Satellite-based INSAR, GPS arrays, ocean bottom seismometers, and AI-driven modeling are helping scientists map stress accumulation with unprecedented precision. 
long-term investment in earthquake-resistant construction, community awareness, and real-time monitoring is essential. While we cannot prevent earthquakes, we can choose how prepared we are when the next big one comes. Alaska stands on the edge of a tectonic knife. The July 17th earthquake was powerful, but it may only be a shadow of what's coming. Deep beneath the mountains and beneath the sea, forces are building toward a future rupture, a megaquake that could rival the worst in history. Whether it strikes tomorrow or decades from now, the science is clear. The Aleutian subduction zone is locked, loaded, and capable of unleashing unimaginable power. In the face of such inevitability, only vigilance, science, and preparedness can protect those who call this wild, beautiful, and dangerous land home.